Welcome back to my channel. Um, this is Resin Dragon, and I wanted to go ahead and start my project. So this is the Dryer Days October art box that we did the unboxing for. And now I am actually going to make this for you guys today. So I'm super excited to get started. Um, I've already mixed up all my resins that I'll be using today. And um, we're just going to lay down some of the detail work today. And then after that cures, then we're going to go ahead and lay down um, the mica powder toppings on that and on the uh, actual box itself. So today we are going to start with um, Andromeda Glitter, Rainbow Bright Holographic Sparkler, um, Pink Iridescent. And then my own glitter that I wanted to add um, a different color purple to. And then we are also going to be using a, a silver paint pen to paint in some of the details. I wanted to show you guys this because I'm not much of a, of a drawer um, or artist other than resin. So I just thought I would show this to you guys. This is my layout <laughs> on where I want the colors to go. So I just thought you would enjoy seeing this uh, beautiful piece of art here um, that I will be using to map out where I'm going to be putting things. So I uh, just thought I would share that funny little tidbit. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the marker first uh, because I feel like that's where it um, needs the most time to dry. So when you use these markers, it does say to shake it really well and then to hold it upright and push the tip so that you can get air into the tube. So I'm doing that. Um, this is the first time using this marker, so I hope it actually starts to work. And I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in the areas in which I want the silver to be. So let me go ahead and start with these little dots and see if it works. sure what's going on here. All right. One moment, please. And we are back. All right. I got it working finally. So we're going to start with these little circles. I'm just going to color those in. Alrighty, and then we are going to go into some of these little swirlies here and see if we can get those to fill in with the marker. This marker actually came with the set, so if you didn't watch the unboxing video, um, I will go ahead and link that in the description so that you can watch it and see what all comes in the kit. But this did come with it. And so did almost all of these colors. The only one that was my own was this purple. That was the only one that I brought with me, so to speak. This is my first time ever using one of these paint pens. So I apologize if this is boring to watch, um, but I'm certainly trying my best to show you guys how they work and, you know, if it's worth it. Um, so far, I'm not really digging it. Um, it seems to be also kind of wiping away as I'm drawing. Um, so if I have to go over it, it wipes away. Or it drops a serious ton amount of paint in there. I can't seem to get it like just right, but maybe it's just me. It could be user error. Like I said, I've never used one of these before, so it could definitely 
just be me and there it goes it's wiping away again I mean honestly it just seems like a little bit more of a pain than it's worth but um, you know what are you gonna do I'm just really gonna try to push through it and see if I can make this work Okay. <laughs> Catherine, you must have done this numerous times because you make this look so easy, my dear. Um, I think you have definitely had lots of practice with paint markers before. <laughs> uh, so for me, not so much. This doesn't seem to be working out so great. And maybe it's because I'm trying to do it in such a fine area. Um, that could definitely be the case as well. Um, not really sure. Let me see if I can get some more. Because it definitely seemed to have stopped. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting some leakage. All right, I'm actually going to turn the video camera off to see if I can finish this up. If I cannot, then I'm just going to wash it off and we'll do glitter. Um, so stay tuned. Okay, so um, I definitely had some major technical difficulties. So I am going to abandon this uh, silver paint pen. Uh, you know, I, I really don't know what to think about it. I don't know if it's because I'm a beginner and maybe I just don't uh, understand it, but I mean, it seems pretty simple, um, but it either comes out too much or not enough. Most times it just never comes out. Um, I got my gloves all messy with paint trying to get it to work. And, uh, this is as far as I got. So... <laughs> I'm going to stop there with the paint pen and anything that was supposed to use the paint pen, I guess I will just use glitter. Um, not really sure what I'm going to do here around the eyes, but we will figure it out. So we are going to go ahead and get started on the rest of the project. So I let my resin sit for about an hour um, before I went ahead and mixed in the ingredients so that it would get, it would thicken up and be easier to use. And I also put a ton more glitter to uh, resin ratio to try to get it real nice and thick um, so that it's easier to work with um, as far as putting it in small places. So here we go. This is the uh, Rainbow Bright Sparkler Holographic that I'm going to go ahead and put into the eyes and push it around. Make sure it's nice and filled with glitter. I probably did not need this much resin. I'm going to be honest. Um, I wasn't sure how much I was going to need for these fine little details. Um, but I always have uh, a mold handy for leftover resin and from one of my last projects I have this little fishy guy here who's already partially filled up so uh, stay tuned for every episode when you see the little fishy that means there was leftover resin and see what he comes out like at the end um, when he's all filled up. So we're going to finish up this eye and move on to the other one. Just want to make sure that there's lots of the holographic glitter in there so that it looks nice and glittery and not just all resin. It's looking pretty darn good. Ooh, this one's probably a little better. I think I was a little heavier handed with the glitter on this eye. Um, you can really use any tool that you feel comfortable with. Um, I prefer using silicone on silicone. Uh, 
All right, so like I was saying, I do prefer to use silicone and silicone. Um, for some of the smaller pieces, I'm probably going to use one of these. Um, it is a dotting tool that is normally used for um, ceramics. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not ceramics, clay. Um, and then it has like a silicone tip on the other side here. So I'm going to try to use that to get into some of these finer details. Um, but for the big old eyes, I think I could just use uh, a normal stir stick. All right, it's looking pretty good there. Uh, let's see, where was I going next? Okay, um, so why don't we, oh, go for the nose, because this is where more of this was supposed to go. So we will see if we can pour and guide it around the nose. All right, so that was really just a teeny bit. Um, all right, so next we are going to go for the Andromeda, which this is what it looks like all mixed up. It's really beautiful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the flowers. Oh, you know what would work really well for the flowers? What if I did a mica powder, because I can't do the silver on the nose and the dots for the flowers. Uh, what if I used like a gold mica to paint it? Yeah, I think that would look really nice. Just grabbing one of my good old handy dandy paint brushes that I have in my drawer here. If you ever have um, old makeup brushes too, I love to use these pointy makeup brushes. They tend to work really nice. They're like at an angle. Oh, come on camera. They're like at an angle. I like to use these too a lot. At least for the center of the flower. <sighs> Oh, you know what? I don't have to do this now. <laughs> I am so silly. Okay, we could do that before we lay the last layer. We don't have to do this now. Um, I can wait a little bit. So let me uh, just rinse that off and get a piece of tape. If ever you make a mistake, you know, with a painting a mica powder, just get a piece of packing tape and pull it right up. Um, that usually works. See how it's coming off there? This also is a really good way to clean your molds. So if you've got dust in them um, or any leftover um, resin in them, um, you can use a piece of packing tape and it just gets everything right out. So see, all gone on the packing tape. So we will do that later. So we're gonna go ahead and pour these little flowers here. And if you've watched my trailer, um, you know I'm kind of a, a messy creator, so things kind of do get a little all over the place, um, especially since I'm pretty new at this. Um, I tend to dribble in places that maybe shouldn't have any dribble, <laughs> um, but it's easy to fix and everything still comes out looking really nice. You just got to know how to fix it. So there's this little dribble here. Um, you could either take a paper towel or, um, a baby wipe or alcohol prep pad or whatever to kind of get that out of there. So, yeah, it's gone. Ta-da! All right, now we're going to go ahead and do this other flower. And we're just going to push it around to get it where I want it to go. So see how it's nice and thick? That way I don't have to worry about it running all over the place. Um, that's from letting the resin sit a little bit. 
Uh, most of my bubbles also were, you know, taken out because I let the resin sit for a while to degas, but I do already see a couple of bubbles. So I'm just going to try to pop those with a toothpick and see if I can get those out or maybe even my little tool here. See if I can kind of fish them out. Now this method can sometimes create new bubbles, so um, I just don't want to torch it. This is such a delicate mold that I don't want to put any heat on it. Um, you could use a heat gun, but again, it's going to kind of blast stuff all over the place if you do that, and I really want the resin where I put it. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Um, and then on this big rose here, we're going to use... Um, a little bit of this purple glitter and the Andromeda um, in this thing. So I'm going to start with the lighter purple in the middle. Okay. And then we're going to do the next couple petals in Andromeda. Yeah, it's still a little clear side when you get into these little places. So Maybe I still should have mixed in more glitter, but hey, you live, you learn, right? Okay, that looks good. And then I'm just going to keep alternating. So I'm going to do some more of the light purple and then more of the Andromeda. Just wherever, wherever you want, like make this your own, just because you see that um, Dryer Day Studio or myself did it one way. Um, you don't have to do it just like us. Um, if you happen to get this art box, be creative with it. Do your own thing. Um, include different colors if you want. Um, make it your own. You don't have to make it exact unless that's what you're going for. Maybe you really like Catherine's design and you really want to go for it, then awesome. You know, do what makes you happy. But don't feel like you have to, you know, do it in whatever order you like best. And I'm sorry if I'm kind of getting in your way a little bit with seeing what I'm doing, but it's very teeny tiny. So I'm going to go in with some more Andromeda. And I continue to mix as I use my, um, oh no, I got some Andromeda in the room. But, okay, <sighs> paper towel time to kind of get some of the extras off, oh boy, this is the, uh, you know, this happens sometimes when you're, when you're creating, um, things don't always go as planned, and you just gotta go with it, right? <laughs> So I hope that you guys see how interesting of a process this can be. Um, it can be fun. It can be messy. Um, it could be whatever you want it to be. All right. I am really liking how it's looking so far. How about you guys? Yeah, all right, so now I'm going to go in with some more light purple up here. And yes, resin self-levels, but sometimes you got to help it along, right? <laughs> all right, that's looking really nice. And then the two big petals, I think um, I will also do those in the light purple. Did I do too much? <laughs> and then just push it around. Help it out a little. There we go. Perfect. And then these ones over here, I'll do those in the Andromeda. These details, um, you know, they take a little bit longer. You know, when you're working on a piece that has a bunch of small little things to fill in like this, it's going to take a little bit longer than a standard uh, pour because, you know, if you're working on something that you're just, you know, pouring one type of resin in, it takes like two seconds, you know, and it could take like for something like that, maybe a half hour to film um, to wear something like this. This might be like an hour long and I'm going to have to cut this <laughs> a lot of this 
out so that you can actually um, enjoy what you're watching instead of just listening and watching me do the whole thing. Um, okay, so let me look at my little chart again. It looks like the next thing to do is going to be the heart. And I told myself I was going to do this in the pink iridescent. Oh, we get to start with the pink iridescent. We haven't used this one yet. So the heart is going to be a pink iridescent glitter. Oh, I like that. That is so pretty. It kind of looks like the unicorn glitter. Oh my gosh. This is going to turn out so nice. I'm so excited to, to do this, but it's going to take a while. <laughs> Where else is I going to use some pink iridescent? Um, I heard that I was going to do pink iridescent and Andromeda here. I don't know why, because you can't do both. Hmm. Well, I'll just start with what I've got. Now, this is a really small... Base, so I think I'm gonna take this guy out of here and use this one to get in between those teeth oh yeah that's working out much better I hope you guys can kind of see that and what that's looking like. But from my angle, it looks gorgeous. <laughs> I'm super excited. Um, so I'm just getting in between every little tooth here and filling that in with resin and glitter. And then the top of the teeth was supposed to be that silver. But since I uh, could not really get that to work very well, I'll figure something else out before we pour that black and purple layer um, in here. Maybe I will do some black mica powder or um, something like that. Maybe a purple mica powder or a silver. I do have metallic uh, micas that I just got in from Let's Resin. So uh, maybe I can try one of those and see if that works out any better. All right, I over poured over there a little bit. So let me see if I can get it to spread around. That was big blob. Big blob. I think that looks about good. Okay. Uh, what was next? Um, ooh, down here. I think I said I was going to use the lighter purple. Um, so, I don't know if I changed my mind or not. I'm going to say no, I'm not going to change my mind. I'm going to try to do the light purple in the spider web. And I find this to be very therapeutic. Um, you know, when I'm pouring, I'm just kind of in my own little world. And, you know, usually I have like music blasting and things like that. Um, but, you know, when you're trying to make videos, it's kind of hard to do that. But um, I just kind of, you know, zone out in my own little world and, you know, um, it's just very therapeutic for me to do this. Um, maybe some of these small details aren't necessarily as fun as, you know, like a big pour, but it's still very, very therapeutic for me to do this. And I mean, if I don't know what I would do if I didn't find this hobby because it's just been so nice and so fun. All right, so now that is done. I was going to do these in the light purple, but I definitely changed my mind. I want to do those in Andromeda. So I'm going to wipe that stick off and do these little guys here in Andromeda. I think I will do the other ones in the light purple. So we'll take these ones and do the light purple. Okay. 
trying to keep it all mixed up that way the I don't just get all resin I need to get some of that glitter okay <sighs> what else did I have I did not have anything for the diamonds because I think I was gonna do those in silver as well um, so I think what I'll do for the diamonds I will use the holographic the rainbow holographic If we can get some nice big chunks in there. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay. Nice big chunks. Perfect. Yes. Love it. Okay. And then under the eyes I had a light purple, but I think I want to go with... Um, the pink iridescent instead under the eyes. Sometimes, like I said, things don't always go as planned. And maybe once you start working with it and the colors that you had laid out, um, you're like, hmm, maybe I should change that up a little bit. Something else might look nicer here. And that's okay. Just flow with it. You know, you're allowed. You're the artist. So I think that's another reason why I love this hobby so much is because it's so free um, you can do whatever you want and, you know, it's, it's art. It's going to turn out nice no matter what. So honestly, it's, it's for you and it's nobody else's, um, unless you decide you want to sell. Um, but in that case, sell it as is, you know, as you made it, be proud of it. Okay. Uh, let's see. It looks like some of our stems started to fill in. So why don't we fill that in with something else? Um, yeah, let's fill it in with some pink iridescent. Let's do that. We'll do the stems in pink iridescent to try to break up some of that Andromeda. And if they mix, hey, that's all right too. We'll see what happens. They might mix a little bit. And then for the eyes, for the dots, I think I'm going to go with the pink iridescent again. I think that would really highlight the, the eyes. It's literally just these itty bitty little dots. And they're a little challenging to see, but you only need a drop. They're easier to fill in than I thought with these tools, man. Sometimes it's just having the right tool um, at your disposal um, to make things just a little bit easier. I think I would have still been here with that darn pen <laughs> if I decided to really just, you know, I'm going to figure this out no matter what. Uh, I think I'd still be here and we wouldn't be this far into the project. Um, so, yeah. I don't know anybody else that resins. Um, it's just me. And it would be, that's one of the reasons why I started reaching out in the community and started doing YouTube videos and TikTok and Instagram because it's a really awesome way to connect with others that are like-minded, that are into the art and understand, you know, your struggles and, and your accomplishments. It's just really nice to share with everyone, you know, the beautiful things that you can make together, um, you know, and it's just, it's been a really welcoming community so far. I really enjoy everyone that I've met and, uh, you know, enjoy joining lives on TikTok and on YouTube to get to know people as well as watching, you know, whatever videos they post. Um, but it's just been a really nice, welcoming community, and I, I really enjoy it. I haven't met a, a person yet who has been mean or condescending or anything like that to me. Everyone has been nothing but nice. All right, so it looks like we just have a couple more things to fill in, and then it's time to rest. So... I'm just going to go ahead and fill in these little sides here, these little curly cues with something. And I do have a ton of resin left, so we'll see what we, what we have in store. I even have some clear. Oh, okay. Let's see. What color do I want to use? 
feel like we're really heavy on the Andromeda. I feel like we're heavy on the light purple. Uh, I'm going to go with Andromeda. I'm just going to do it because I really am a sucker for dark purple. Well, I'm a sucker for purple, but especially dark purple. Just trying to fill in these little curly cues here. Because they were also supposed to be silver painted. And obviously they're not. Okay, I really like that accent. It's coming out really nice. It's a nice pop of dark in all of this lightness down here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is something else that I saw um, on Dryer Days is she took the bottom and she also sprinkled in some of these glitters um, across that too. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to stick it to the walls and see if it'll stick in here like this. I'm going to see what happens. Drip, drip, drip. Drip, drip, drip. And then pour a little on top. And mix it around. Even mix them together. Hey, uh -huh, why not? See what happens, right? Okay, and then we will do the same with the Andromeda. Wherever I put his little stir stick, here it is. Drip, drip, drip. Mix them all together, right? Let's see what happens. This is going to be way too much resin for my little fishy. Uh, <laughs> so I think he's definitely going to be finished tonight. Uh, so you may see him appear in the reveal video with this box because he's going to be done. And then we're going to pour, pour, mix. Do some swirlies, whatever you choose. Okay. And then, last but not least, uh, the light purple glitter. Drip, drip, drip. Drip, drip, drip. Chip, chip, chip. All right, so it's looking pretty darn good to me. And here's little fishy. Let's go ahead and use some of this uh, pink iridescent. Fill him with some of that. We're gonna layer whatever we can. So Fishy looks like he's pretty full already with just today's project. And I will grab some more molds to go ahead and use the rest of this resin. But I will be back in a couple of days after this has fully cured. And we will then pour the black mica powder and the uh, purple mica, mica powders right on top of all this. You can even do this with your fingers if you want, if you feel it's spread a little too thin. So anyway, so we will be back um, to pour the next one in about three days because my resin takes three days to set up. So we will be back in a few days 
to uh, get that going for you guys. So um, I will see you then. Welcome back everyone. Um, so we are now about three days later. So this has fully cured and I'm going to go ahead and um, fill in the parts that we were talking about with the mica powder. So over here with the uh, flowers in the middle, I'm going to do some mica and um, in the teeth and in the nose. I decided to go with a, um, a silver mica powder. It's metallic by Let's Resin and I'm going to go ahead and fill in those spots. So here's a nice uh, close-up of what it looks like after it cured. So we have all these beautiful parts covered with glitter and with different colors. And then here's the trinket box as this kind of cured. It looks neat from this side too. You could see through it, all the sparkle. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then I'm gonna mix up my resin and we'll lay down the passionate purple and the black pearl. Yeah, that is really metallic. <laughs> it lives up to its name, that's for sure. And we're just brushing it on. Um, and I know I talked about this in the uh, in the other video. This is just a makeup brush um, that I had sitting around that I don't use anymore um, or didn't use before. Um, so I don't always buy uh, brushes for a specific reason um, or for resin I just use sometimes what I have around the house so worked out you don't seem to need a whole lot I'm just kind of scraping the top of the bottle which is yeah it's it's very opaque this is the first time I'm using a metallic mica powder um, I bought them I haven't used them yet and wow that's really opaque I like that a lot I'm going to do the chin, too, while I'm at it. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and mix up my resin, and I will be right back with you. All right, welcome back. So now I have my respirator on since I am going to be mixing and pouring a uh, resin. And I went ahead and already mixed it and poured it into my little cup, my cups here. So we are going to mix up the black pearl first. And I know people really like to watch this process uh, as far as dropping the makeup powders in and getting them all mixed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and get that on camera for you. I'm going to take some nice huge scoops here of this black because I really want a really deep black and there's about uh, 80 milliliters per small cup and which is a lot of resin so I just want to make sure that I get a really really nice dark black so I'm going to go ahead and cover that up and we'll get this mixed for you Oh, it's already turning a real nice dark. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's coming out real nice already. I'm kind of a, <laughs> a really fast stir when it comes to mica powders because I feel like if you do it super slow, um, you're going to have a lot of clumps. So I'm pretty vigorous when I mix my mica powders so that um, it gets blended. And I tend to, you know, take the stick out and, and make sure there's no powder stuck on the stick. And then I just vigorously mix it up again. So might get a little bit more bubbleage going on there, but that's okay. We could pop those later. And I tend to let my resin sit a little bit after I mix it so that it can degas. So, wow, that is a real nice, deep, deep black. I just wanna take a look and make sure everything's looking good. It is. Okay, so 
So that's the black pearl. And now for the passionate purple, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do some nice healthy scoops to make sure that that purple is, um, is very, very purple. I don't know if you guys have seen the heart shape box video that I did uh, where I did half of it in passionate purple just testing the color and it came out kind of a, a clear so um, it was still a little bit see-through so I want to make sure that I put enough of this so it's not so transparent so we'll do as much as we did the black right those four heaping scoops and then we'll go ahead and mix it up There we go. Hopefully it's not as transparent as it was before when we did this. Okay. I'm going to move those out of the way. <sighs> okay. And little fishy is making a comeback. Um, we didn't have enough to fill him up. His tail needs a little bit more. Um, so we will finish him up with any leftover resin we have. And I also started uh, another uh, heart to the trinket box, so we'll fill that up the rest of the way too. But first, let's finish this masterpiece. So I'm just going to start pouring, to be honest. Um, I don't really have any clear direction, and that's something that I love about resin, is that you don't have to have a clear direction. You could just start pouring and see what happens, right? Experiment. So I'm going to pour some of this passionate purple. That's expected to happen. Um, some of the mica powder, whenever you do something like that, will rise to the top, and that's okay. Um, I just hope we didn't lose any of that really cool detail that we put down there. Do some more purple swirls. All right. That is looking pretty full to me. So now we're going to move on to this one, the actual box itself, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just kind of swirl it around. Okay, sorry about that little cut there. My camera battery died. So small technical difficulty. Uh, thank goodness it's an easy fix um, and my hubby came to my rescue because I have resin all over my hands and I really didn't want to touch the camera. So um, since that cut you can really see this is starting to spread out and uh, I really like how it looks so far. So I'm going to pour a little bit more black and then um, pour a little bit more purple and continue to try to get this marbly stripey pattern. I could use a heat gun also to make it blend, but I really don't want to blend it. I'm kind of digging the way that it's looking um, as it gets stripey, so I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to bother with the heat gun. I want to see what this looks like as it continues to go this way. And this passionate purple is so pearly, um, or <laughs> pearly, is that a word? Uh, pearlescent. Um, I'm really digging the way that it's looking. And then we're going to pour some of this black over that. Some more stripes. Oh man, did I pour just enough resin? I'm going to be pretty proud of myself if I really, if I really did that. Um, it was totally unintentional. I do have some clear left over just in case I needed it, uh, but I don't think I'm going to. It's a little chaotic, but that's okay. My, <laughs> I'm a little chaotic, <laughs> so we're just going to go with it.
All right. So that's pretty much all of the purple we have. I do see a couple of bubbles. Um, I'm, I'm not going to use a torch. I think I'm just going to try to fish them out because I really don't, I really don't want to ruin this mold. Um, don't want to put any heat on it or anything like that. So I am actually uh, going to try to fish them out. And the other option that you could do too, um, instead of using a heat gun to try to get that marbling effect, um, you can also just use your stir stick and, you know, start swirling things around. So that's an option. That's kind of what it's, oh, I like how that went. And then we could do the same over here, just kind of make some swirlies. Trying not to disturb the mica powder that I laid. All right. And then as it starts to settle, um, it's going to shrink. So I think I talked about that in one of my other videos too, but um, I just want to make sure that I reiterate that. So what's going to happen is, is that as the resin cures, it is going to shrink. And you are going to see that you may need to top them off. So... Probably in about 24 hours, I'll come back and I'll take a look at it. If it shrank a lot and doesn't look like that um, the mold is completely full because you'll, you'll see that it'll pull away, then I will go ahead and mix up a little bit more and just top it off with clear um, so that we don't lose this awesome effect. Um, I could put some clear on it now, but I think it will affect the swirl things that we have going on here. So I really don't want to do that. I don't want to mess anything up. I could also mix a little bit more black and a little bit more purple just to make sure it's completely topped off. So after I fish out the bubbles, we'll see which one I'm going to I'm gonna do. If I'm just going to leave it or if I should mix up a little bit more mica. But I can see this huge bubble over here. So I generally just take a toothpick and I fish them out. And I push them up against the side until they pop. I don't scrape the mold because what's going to happen is if you scrape the mold on accident or scratch it with a wooden tool, it will actually leave a scratch on your silicone and that scratch will come up on every single project you do there on out. So you want to be very careful when fishing so that you don't um, scratch your mold. So here's another really big one right here in the corner. I'm just going to kind of push it up against the side until it pops and it popped. I really don't see anything else. There might be some micro bubbles hidden in there, but right now I don't see much. All right. <laughs> messy mat. I told you this is a really messy hobby. Um, they're looking pretty full. But I am going to mix up just a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start pouring a little bit of purple first. I just really feel like it needed a little top off. Um, I think it was a, a little short. So just going to top it off with a little bit of purple. Perfect. And then a little bit of black. Yeah, there we go. That's better. That's much better. Okay, so now that they're completely full, I'm going to go ahead and fill up the rest of my little fishy's tail over here. I think we should do, um, do some black to finish him off because he's got some sparkly everywhere. If he had a little layer of black, might bring out those sparkles. All right, Mr. Fishy is topped off. Can move him back over to the side and we've got the rest of our heart down here and we'll go ahead and uh, pour some in here so we'll just take the rest of our purple pour it on and we'll see how that uh, how that comes out all right so 
now that we are at the end of the pour stage, I'm going to just do a couple little swirls here and there. And then I'll come back in 24 hours, check it out. Um, once it starts to uh, cure, again, it will pull inward. So these swirls will probably disappear, um, in which I can swirl again. You, as long as it's not completely cured up, you can continue to swirl a little bit. So I'll come back in 24 hours, see what it looks like, and then maybe do a little bit of a swirl. But So I hope you enjoyed today's pour, and join me again in three days when we unmold this puppy. Welcome back everyone. It is now three days later and we are gonna go ahead and unmold um, the sugar skull trinket box that we poured. And I am so excited to see what it looks like. I hope you are too. So without further ado, let's get at it. Now again, this is the first time I'm ever making this particular one. So um, I'm really not sure how to go about unmolding it, but I'm just gonna do it just like I normally do with any mold, I'm just gonna loosen up the sides first and then maybe find a way I can peel it away from itself and turn it sort of inside out. Um, I see a lot of other creators do this as well, turn it inside out to make it easier. So hopefully this works and I don't have too much of a fight here to get it out. Oh, okay, this is coming out a lot easier than I thought. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna pull, it has like these little bracers here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those too. All right, and we can take a look together. Let me put the mold back inside right. You don't want it to stay like that. Okay, let's flip it over and see what the inside looks like. Oh, look how shiny! Okay, that looks pretty awesome. And then here are the sides where we drip, drip, dripped <laughs> um, some of the glitter into the sides. And I really like how that turned out um, in there. It's really cool looking. And then you could see a lot of the glitter also um, sunk and is in this part here, which is perfectly fine because that's like the top of the box. So I would love to see all that glitter. And then this here is where we kind of put it all over the top, um, the leftover glitter. And that's kind of how it dried. Um, it looks cool to me. Let me know what you think. So I'm super excited that it came out this nice. I really love these colors. And you could see the purple and the black real nice. So that's really cool. I was worried that the purple would get overshadowed by the black, but it really didn't. Okay, now this is the part I'm super excited about. Um, you can see the back here. This is just where some of that silver mica that we used for his teeth, for his nose, and some of the flowers. Some of the silver mica rose to the top, and that's what you see there in that swirl. That is okay. That happens all the time when you paint something with mica, so don't worry about that. Um, it's not gonna show the bottom anyway. So let's get him unmolded. Oh, I have been waiting and waiting and waiting to do this and the wait is finally over. Mm -hmm. All right, is it gonna come out okay? I really hope so. It's my first one and I'm uh, so excited about it. Oh, it's coming off real easy. And there's some parts that are a little stuck, so I'm just going to give it a little bit more elbow grease. All right, well look, our mold is completely clean. So that means that everything that we put in the mold came off on the face. Ah, how awesome is that? All right, one, two, three. Ooh, wow. I don't know what to say. It looks really pretty. Um, you know, there's a little mess ups here from where we had the marker. Oh yeah, look, there's the camera angle. Um, so we had a little bit of leakage from the marker there and then maybe a little bit here um, on these swirlies from when we used that marker that I couldn't get to work. 
Um, but other than that, man, this thing came out gorgeous. I do see some bubbles um, right here that popped. So we have kind of a little, a little divot um, in, here, let me get this out of the way because it's picking that up. There we go. You could see a little divot um, from where the bubble popped. Um, but for my first attempt, I think this came out beautiful. I'm definitely going to make more of these um, because I think this is absolutely gorgeous and super fun to do. Um, and then when you put the two together, it is supposed to make a box. So this is the top of the box and it's supposed to fit inside like so <gasps> wow there it is there is the box so please leave me a comment and let me know how you think my first try at this mold came out if you like the colors and uh, maybe if you bought a dryer days art box and what you thought of your creation and maybe share yours with me and let me know i would love to watch it um, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment. It really helps out my channel a lot if you do that. And until next time, why don't you pour one for me?